Now it's been a long time coming, we finally have an aftermarket display for this model. However, there are some major drawbacks. We are the first to get the screen and come April, I'm sure our competitors will have it as well. One of the things that we're working on fixing though, as I'm gonna talk about in a second, is the thickness. So hopefully come April, we'll have a thinner option due to the technology of the IC that might also solve some of these other issues, but only time will tell. So we're still in April and I have an update for you. As you might have seen, there is a new display for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it does address some of the major issues as previously discussed. Today, I'm gonna to go over what this new screen entails, highlighting the improvements, and also talking about some of the issues that still remain. One of the biggest differences is the thickness of the display. It's much thicker, and it's going to protrude out from the phone like an old aftermarket screen. On the previous model, the display protruded quite a ways away from the frame. This new one, however, sits much more flush, just like an original display. One thing to note, the bottom left corner is a little bit more stubborn when it comes to pushing it into the frame, but with a little extra effort, it snaps in just fine. One thing to note though, you definitely need to have the bordering adhesive that holds the screen to the frame because the sides will become spongy as without that adhesive, the screen tends to want to bow slightly in the middle. As you can see here, it's slightly spongy, but with proper display adhesive, this shouldn't be an issue. One of the other issues is that it has a slow wake up function with a gradient animation. And some of the occasional multi-touch glitches still persist. Not that many people use three fingers at the same time on their screen, but as you can see here, there are some issues when you're crossing over those axes where other fingers are interacting with the screen, you may experience some glitches. Previously, the proximity sensor function was completely eliminated with the screen where it would not black out at all during a call. Now it does, however, it's somewhat finicky. It doesn't always sleep and wake just like an original. There is some variability there with the time it takes to either sleep or wake back up, with occasionally requiring you to hit the power button to get it to come back on. And one of the more noticeable differences is the brightness of the display. It doesn't quite go as dark as I'd like it to, especially when compared with an original. And one of the minor thing is when touching around the edge, just the very edge, you get that small little bleed of touch over on that last row of pixels when you're when you're touching around the edge. Given that this is an aftermarket for an iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's quite the step up from the previous aftermarket. It still has a bit of ways to go in my opinion, but it's better than not having an option at all. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.